You can manage Echo Workstation installation and removal from your Echo Administration console. Once the Perl Echo Workstation software is installed, all updates and upgrades can be automated from the Perl Echo server computer. To begin, we need to copy an entire workstation folder to a network share that is accessible to both the Echo Administration machine as well as the target workstation on which you wish to install the Perl Echo Workstation software. I'll create a share called Software. Verify that the network share has read and write share permissions for your account on the Echo Administration machine. Since I know members of the domain admins group have permission to install software on all my remote machines, I'll make sure that the entire domain admins group has read and write share permissions to this directory. If you want to limit permissions to your specific account, just be sure your specific account also has permission to install software on the target workstation. Take note of the UNC path name of your share. We'll be using that later. Now I'll copy the entire workstation folder to my software share. Now let's start the remote installation from the Perl Echo Administration Console. Select Manage Installations from the Perl Echo Program Navigator. In this first attempt, we're going to purposely show a failure due to the target workstation not having file and print sharing enabled. On the left, select the target machine or multiple machines by holding the Control or Shift keys. Our target in this example is a Windows 7 virtual machine. In the first entry box, Let's enter the path to the workstation software and the network share we just created. The path needs to be an absolute UNC path as opposed to a relative path since the target workstations will be directed to the same location in order to access the Echo workstation installation files. As we saw when we created our share, the UNC format is a double backslash followed by the server name, followed by the share name and the location of our installation files. Next, enter the appropriate credentials necessary to access the share and to install the software in the target machine. Since my login is a part of the domain admin group, I'll have the appropriate credentials to do both and thus complete the remote install. The Echo Workstation installation requires target system to reboot. You can have the installation complete when the target workstation is rebooted or you can force an immediate reboot. Note that forcing an immediate workstation restart Will reboot the target workstation without warning any active end users and could cause the loss of unsaved work. Click install and we'll see a status bar in the administration console as the process waits for a return code from the target workstation. Once complete, a log file will be generated displaying installation results, including any errors if they occurred. Here we see that the installation failed because we could not connect to the target machine. Reading further, we see that file and print sharing may not be enabled on the target machine. Uh, let's look online at this specific URL. Here we see an error similar to the error we received. We see there are two ways listed to rectify this. We can easily set a group policy to enable file and print sharing for the target machines from our domain controller, or we can manually enable file and print sharing at the target machine itself. For this demonstration, let's choose the manual method. As instructed, we'll go to the target system's control panel. Select network and internet. Next, select network and sharing center. In the navigation pane to the left, click Change Advanced Sharing Settings. Under Domain, select Turn on File and Print Sharing. Click Save Changes to complete. Now let's try a remote installation again. Back on our server, I'll simply click Install again since all of our previous entries are still set. Now as we wait for a response from the target, Let's show the target Windows 7 machine. It should reboot without us doing anything. So let's do some web browsing and see what happens.
and there it goes. Now let's go back to the server and review the results. Here we see that the installation completed successfully and that the workstation is rebooting. Now let's log into the target and see if we are monitoring the machine. But we should see What we should see back at the server after a few moments is a workstation startup entry. And if, we, and if we go back and do some browsing now, we should see some real activity showing up that will eventually feed our reports. Notice that in version 12 and later, we're even seeing secure traffic. And that's it. Note that everything we just reviewed can also be found in Chapter 2 of the Pearl Echo User's Guide. Thanks for watching.